Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Uh, reminder always from myself, inshaAllah, that this is the holy month of Ramadan. This reality of 9 and 81 and 81st name of Allah al Muntaqeem and 81st name of Sayyidina Muhammad by Dalal Khirat wa Dhul Fadl that by every grace and emanation is a key in which Allah will avenge and this power of nine, the power of Ramadan is under the secret of the 81st month, the number 81, Surah 81, Taqweer and the 81st name of Allah Al-Muntaqeem that to avenge His servant from what shaitan has put upon them. And by means of Ramadan Allah to wash and to destroy all badness and all the damage that shaitan putting upon insan and Allah wanting to keep the soul to be beautific and purified and pure. This is a immense rahmah and ni'mah, our left hand has eight and one that Allah inscribed upon us this coding that this Dhul Fadl, this blessing that Prophet want to bestow upon the servant that Al-Muntaqeem everything has to be destroyed. Means that everything wrong Allah must avenge us to take away the difficulties that shaitan has put upon us and Ramadan is then a gift for the nation to be dressed by these realities, blessed by these realities. Everything that Sayyidina Muhammad achieved on Laylatul Israhi wal Miraj in Rajab that he wants like a comet, he's shooting into the Divine, the Presence and his whole nation like stars flowing behind. And he wants to dress them from that reality, bless them from that reality and the only way to achieve that reality is to do nothing. This is a sign for our humility. It's not your zakah that will get it, it's not your, your salah that will get it, it's not anything that you do will get it. Actually Allah asks us, don't do anything, sit and fast, abstain, just sit and fast. I will bless you with it, I will dress you with it, I will forgive you everything. Only by means of your fasting can you achieve this rahmah and mercy from Allah That Allah described, I will give you a gift that no angel knows, no prophet knows, no one knows what Allah will be bestow of these lights and these ranks to the soul. By virtue of this fast, by virtue of the miraj of Sayyidina Muhammad that is in a continuous miraj to Divine the Presence. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from those realities that we talked about the realities of seeing and opening the heart. We talked about Sayyidina Khidr is not a seen guide but an unseen guide and how to develop a heart in which to See that reality that there's more from the unseen that benefit us than from the seen. Our life is to take benefit from malakut and the malakut can't be seen with the physical eyes. All these lights and all these knowledges that Allah want to bestow upon us is from the world of light. How then to open our heart into that reality? We talked from the levels of the heart. When, when, when they teach about the levels of the heart, it's not what they call Lataif only. When they talk about the centers of energy and the points of energy, we are an energy being. 360 satellite dishes upon insan, taking energy and coordinates and, and every type of tajalli that Allah want to send. The headquarters for that coordinates is the qalb, is the heart. And these lataif and, and subtle energy points is for opening the heart which is what? 
the house of Allah قال بالمؤمن بيت الله This is a reality that is taught about the reality of the house of Allah Not about your heart and how to open your heart but when they're teaching this reality these servants are teaching you about the house of Allah And that this first door of the house they call the qalb and that's the importance of your heart. And why this qaf, lam, ba is a heart. So when they say, Lataifa qalb, think in the world of malakut not in reference to you because this door you were not supposed to be in it. This way was not about, I'm going to read Qur'an to see what Allah wants for me. The door was, لَيْنَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْجَعْلِمِينَ Glory be to Allah I'm oppressor to myself, I don't exist in this story. This was about Allah's secret to Sayyidina Muhammad When I negated myself then every subsequent reality is going to be of something unimaginable. So when they say the lataif of the qalb, why qalb and what does Allah want us to understand from many deep oceans of what Allah wants, this is just a drop. I'm sure awliyaullah have much higher understanding, we're nobody. But from what they taught us, what Allah wants and understanding from the qalb because there's, there's no flesh in heaven called the qalb but this qaf wal Qur'an in Majeed. This lam is the representing lisan al-haq. There is a soul and there is a reality that has been created to speak for Allah So in your book, in our book Allah is is eternally unknown. There is no place that you go where Allah sits upon a throne. There is no throne that can hold Allah Anything that would hold would claim it to be stronger than that presence. So the throne is for who? Zinnat al-Arsh, what we are saying in our salawat. You are the, the beauty and you are what beautifies that reality and what that ra- reality represents of the holy face wajikil kareem. The arsh of Allah is symbolic of an authority and the symbol of authority never perishes. If the authority perishes the kingdom would have perished and shaitan would have overtaken. Allah says, everything perishes but my holy face. So then you understand that the arsh of Allah is the holy face, it doesn't perish. It has two legs, two legs, four, has two armchairs, five, six and has the seat is seven. These are seven points and realities, right? The chair has four legs or if it's three-legged chair it would fall <laughs> over. Everything from Allah has to be perfect. It means it has two points and two points, it has two armrests in which that king has his authority and has the seat in which he sits and Allah sits upon his heart. It means that that face that never perishes, the authority that never perishes as if everything going to collapse, all of creation will collapse including all malaika, all bayt al-mahmur, all the heavens and earth will collapse but the holy face will never collapse. That which is eternal the authority, if that authority closed down and shut down then what would that be? So in this qalb that Allah wants, why that lataif and this house of Allah starts with the qalb? Because the qalb for Allah is different than your heart. The qalb for Allah is a power and an izza from qaf. To understand that this qaf wal Qur'an and Majeed which everything is encompassed within Holy Qur'an. You can't look outside of Holy Qur'an 
for anything. Allah says, in this reality everything is contained within it, it brings the dead to life and take life out of the dead, it has everything in it. So Qaf is that ultimate authority and power, all of its realities and Allah give it to a because this is qalb, give this Qaf, He gave it a lamb. He gave it a tongue in which to communicate the desire of the qaf. This is the qul, the reality of what is qul mean. When Allah want the qaf to be known, how is it going to be known? He gives it a lisan. Your soul is created to talk for the qaf because the izzah and might of Allah is in there. That I created your lamb, your lisan to speak for me and if my speech hits a mountain it will be dust. But your qalb is firm, means nothing can contain that reality except the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So this qalb lamb is a power and might moving to the ba. All of Qur'an in Fatiha in seven verses, seven times you recite Surat Al-Fatiha is power of Holy Qur'an being unleashed upon you. All of Surah Fatiha and Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem now like a laser and all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in the ba'. So then qalb and this lataif al-qalb is this izzah and might of Allah directed to this ba and this ba coming and describing, I am the entire city of all realities. But Imam Ali, Babahu is the caretaker of that ba. Go through that door with love and respect and ihtiram and good character. For if he's pleased with your character, this door of ba will open. What unfolds of ba is the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the entire unfolding of Holy Qur'an and everything from Samawati wal Ard is made from it, is manifesting from it. Its power and its source is Qaf. So it's directing into the Ba, this Ba has gatekeepers and their gates is their loyalty is to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. There's no way into this city without accepting their safe, right? Zulfiqar, there's no way into this without accepting La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah They take the bad character, enter into the city and these are ulul bab and the caretakers of the bab. So when Allah asking for the qalb and lataif of the qalb, the understanding of the qalb is the immense ocean. It's not only my physical heart. But what Allah is saying, take a, a path of light and knowledges that understand these haqqaiqs of the world of light that Allah womb to dress. So when He begin to teach the servant from this lataif al-qalb and I don't think there's many things that you can find on this subject. You have to be clever to find something on this subject. If you find it, it's about the house of Allah if you study it and make your connection, it should be an entryway into the house of Allah the eternal house of Allah Not only the imitated house on this earth but the real house and the eternal house within the world of light. So then they ask, all the realities of knowledge is from that qalb. So that reality of qalb is continuously flowing to the servant. So who's related to the qalb? Sayyidina Jibreel because he brings knowledges. Who is the Prophet related to the qalb? Sayyidina Adam Wa laqad karamna bani Adam wa alama isma kullaha. 
Anything related to knowledge is in that lataif. Sayyidina Usman Qani Jami al Qur'an al Majeed was bringing the knowledges and realities of Holy Qur'an. So everything related to knowledges is at that lataif of God because it's dressed from the understanding of knowledges. When the servant is understanding that lataif, understanding that energy, understanding that reality, making the connection with these awliyaullah, making their connection tafakkur and muraqaba and asking, Ya Rabbi dress me from these lights, bless me from these lights, I'm taking a path of knowledges. You have to enter so deep into that knowledge and not have doubt. You can't be somebody keep coming and thinking, is this shirk, is this ridiculous questions? You're asking shaykh about shirk. The question alone threw you outside because you, you, you just failed your course. Do you think the shaykh would come and teach you of shirk? What kind of character are you? Means you have so much doubt it has overtaken you. This way is walking on water, this way is a, is a perfected reality that is taught from the khawas of Allah's creation, not the common but from the elite of Allah created souls, they're teaching from those realities to reach to people whom Allah has destined to enter into that home. So they took a life in being from the qalb, they are the people of the qalb. They are the people of seeking knowledges. It's not I just focused on yellow and I'm now ready for the next. They took a life of seeking knowledges and they have such a thirst and hunger they don't stop reading the shaykh's material. They don't stop watching the videos. They don't stop trying to learn and learn and learn because Mawlana Shaykh described, don't be like a, a rock in the water. Rock in the water just goes all the way to the bottom. Be a fish where it thinks that every moment I'm going to drink this entire ocean. Means they are in continuous state of studying the reality, studying and reading that reality, making their tafakkur, making their contemplation. Ya Rabbi dress me from this ocean of qab, dress me from this ocean of knowledges so that all these when I make the connection with the shaykh He's the cable man, <clears throat> he facilitates your connection to the heavens. If you made a good connection and the cable is connected, every personality from that reality should be able to come and begin to teach. Sayyidina Jibreel will teach of the reality of his light. Sayyidina Uthman Qani Jami al Qur'an al Majeed will teach from the reality of Holy Qur'an of what gift Allah has given to him to compile the Holy Qur'an. Every personality and every light in that reality will come to convey its reality because all of them want to convey these blessings. They're not keeping it for themselves like inheritance that they don't want to give. But they don't see anyone ready to take that reality. From the qalb it goes to the seer. The seer is a red light and signifies struggle. Under the authority of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, Sayyidina Mikail alayhi salam, Sayyidina Umar al Farooq alayhi salam and now everything that has to do with faith because red is for struggle, red is for the fight. The jihad al-akbar, not the fighting of people because Prophet described the greatest fight is against ourselves. So means Sayyidina Mikail comes and teaches that, I am the angel of warfare and I'm the angel of sustenance. That how is, is struggle related to sustenance? That when I come and the madad of my support is to declare war on your shaitans. Are you willing to fight them? 
they can't fight if you're not fighting. If you accept your bad character, accept your anger, accept all of these bad characteristics, they stand back and say, this person is not uh, interested in, in fighting against their badness. Don't expect somebody else to fight a fight that you're not willing to do. So they say, are you ready? Are you at a station in which you're about to take your struggle? Means then arm yourself with your sword and begin to struggle against your bad characteristics. Sayyidina Nuh begins to come and teaches that this struggle that Allah has us in in life is to build your ship, your ship is your faith. So if anyone is not struggling because there's a lot of emails coming in after we go to communicate with Yahya, everybody talking about their struggles but they're quick to try to get rid of them and not be patiently working through them. Because it's not about just getting rid of the problem but living with the problem. It's about how to live with the difficulty that Allah gives to us, how to do the zikr, how to do the tafakkur, how to do the contemplation, to live a life to be patient. Struggle, every struggle and every difficulty is building my faith. If I take it from A to Z in a second, I didn't achieve faith, I just got rid of a problem and that was not what Allah wanted. Some people come and say, oh there's no, I have a problem, I have a problem, it didn't go away. It wasn't supposed to go away. You were supposed to achieve an understanding but you're so preoccupied with getting rid of the problem, you're not understanding the real solution. It wasn't about say that a new keep asking, you know, when's the rain coming, when's the rain coming, when's the rain coming, when's the rain coming? He became impatient and asked for his people to be killed. Not the character of Sayyidina Muhammad Because he became impatient with his people and said, they will never believe, Ya Rabbi, forget it, drown them. And Allah began their flood. It wasn't about trying to force Allah to be in the rain but you build your faith when you build your ship and people come to bother you and you build your ship and people come to, to insult you and you build your ship. People come to ridicule you and mock you because Allah wants to see, do you love me when everyone is happy with you or do you love me when everyone is bothering you? You love me when everything is difficult or when everything is good? If everything is good so what? Everybody loves Allah at that time. It's when things become bad, it's when things become difficult and when everything becomes sour around us in life and say, Ya Rabbi uf awudu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ibad Ya Rabbi. You see every condition of me and I'm overwhelmed. You see my condition. And what Sayyidina Nuh said, I'm overwhelmed Ya Rabbi, the shaitan has thrown so much onto me, I'm overwhelmed wa fata abwaab as And at that time Allah accepted that you are overwhelmed, I opened the gates of the heaven and I poured water upon them. And every day when we ask Ya Rabbi, I'm becoming overwhelmed from difficulty and everything that been thrown upon me, open just the water upon me. No need anyone to be in difficulty, just shower me with your rahmah and your mercy Ya Rabbi and give me strength to keep enduring. And this is the sir. This red light of the sir is to struggle. This red light of the sir is to understand that I'm not to accept my bad character. I'm not to say I have a right to be bad with you. I have a right to, to allow my bad character to come out. But I took a path in which Ya Rabbi I want to win against this and it's like you against 700,000. It's not a fight that you can win until either ja'al nasrullahi wal fat. Until you're fighting, 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 fighting until Allah give a cue to the angels, enter in. Enter in into this one's battle because they're sincere and as soon as these support from Allah begin to enter in, every difficulty will begin to go down 
And then again, difficulty comes in life. But our life was about the struggle. Victory is only for Allah We are not to be concerned with the victory, our life is only about the struggle. How good you struggle, this is where your reward. When they want to begin to give that reward, then these lights begin to enter into the heart. Those whom struggle in that reality, they become Mahdiyoon. Sayyidina Mahdi represents that red light. That's why they describe his turban as a red turban and he has a white skin sort of reddish freckly con… what is it called? Constitution, like a skin, huh? Complexion. 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 But the turban red and he represents strong warfare. Because the Mahdiyoon, they are the Muhammadan Hadi, that they represent the Muhammadan reality and guidance, that they're strong, strong against themselves and bad character. Not that they're perfect. But they are continuously struggling against bad character, continuously striving to reach towards that reality until in these days Sayyidina Mahdi begins to support them spiritually. That he must support them and be their push the God, be behind them to keep them going for shaitan is fighting everywhere. If not for the spiritual sword of Sayyidina Mahdi None one of these awliya could open their mouth, none of them have a power to, to do anything against the amount of shaitan. It's the sword of Sayyidina Mahdi that is behind them, that even give them the ability to talk. They're in the middle of uh, oceans of shaitan. Had it been anything else, the minute they would have opened their mouth, shaitans would have ravaged and ripped them to pieces by night. You see people with satanic attacks everywhere. You think they could survive like that? It's the sword of Sayyidina Mahdi that keeps them alive. This is the sir and the light and the energy that dressing upon the heart. We pray that in, in the big struggle in life is always Ramadan. That when the believer enters into Ramadan that Oh, this is going to be a hard month, it's going to be difficult. And then Allah's rahmah make it to be beatific. Allah's maghfirah make it to be blessed, enlightened, where you begin to take away all these difficulties. This month has a tremendous reality of annihilating everything so that the seer can be opened on the believer. Means that when they make their tafakkur and asking, Ya Rabbi, dress me from this light, dress me from the light of Sayyidina Mikail. That I'm nothing and I'm no one, I see nothing. Ya Sayyidina Mika for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad dress me and bless me. As much as we struggle in the way and get that madad and get that support, every struggle in bad character Allah begin to change the dress upon the soul. When they're struggling against their bad character, their soul is becoming beautific and noble. As it becomes beautific and noble, Allah's command for Sayyidina Mikail begins to change for the sustenance of that servant's soul. When he begins to change the sustenance, you're no longer unleaded fuel, you're high octane. Your practices have found acceptance with Allah you're of a high octane nature, Allah has ordered us to give a different sustenance upon your soul. Right? Old car you made may have a certain type of gas but something from heavens requires completely different fuel. And as a result Sayyidina Mika's orders are then change the sustenance upon their soul. When that sustenance and the reality that coming upon their soul changes, no doubt everything in their physical world changes because of the sustenance from paradise is reaching upon their soul. Everything from their dunya will begin to change. Why? Because of the paradise reality that dressing them upon this earth. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with these understandings and realities. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, 
classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.